Hi everyone, the topic that is going to be discussed today is interpersonal skills. Now interpersonal skills uh, it can be a set of skills or tools used to effectively interact and communicate with other people both individually and in groups. That is basically interpersonal skills are something that is needed in everyday life. They are a set of tools or skills that are used to effectively communicate both individually and in groups. Now they include a wide range of skills, basically they are uh, a wide range of skills which are basically communication skills such as listening and effective uh, listening and effective speaking. That is both listening and effective speaking play a very major role in interpersonal skills. They are two very valuable interpersonal skills. Now in, uh, interpersonal skills have other names too. That is they are also they are also called, called social skills like uh, people skills and life skills. They, are, they have other varied names as such like interpersonal skills are other varied names such as mentioned before like they are also called social skills and people skills and life skills. They are very essential in day to day life. Now the most valuable interpersonal skills are of six types. Alright now uh, the first one is communication skills. Now communication skills are of three types. The communication skills are verbal, non-verbal and listening skills. Now verbal that is used and day to day interaction while talking with people that is communicating through words like uh, words like um, verb verbally communicating with your co-workers or with anybody that includes communication skills verbally and then uh, ver verbal communication skills the second one is non-verbal that includes gestures non-verbal non non uh, communication skills include gestures cues etc listening skills. Listening skills are basically as an active listener how much you receive as in what is being spoken by the speaker and how much you respond appropriately. Second one is negotiation and persuasion. How much of a, uh, how much you can negotiate or nego negotiate and persuade as a person while communicating in a group. Then the third one is problem solving and decision making. Now problem solving and decision making are very important valuable or very important or very valuable interpersonal skills when it comes to communicating in a group or when it comes to working in a corporate firm especially when there are crucial when there are, when there are situations that you have to uh, where you have to uh, decide as to or uh, make decisions accordingly in especially in uh, like for example uh, while taking crucial decisions Problem solving and uh, decision making play a very important role. That is your ability, the person's ability to solve a problem at that particular moment, take important decisions. They play a very important role. Next is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence also has another name called emotional quotient. The emotional quotient or emotional intelligence basically requires your ability to think in a, in a very proper manner, as in think in a very non-emotional way, think very practically and act accordingly. Teamwork. Now teamwork is another it is another very important uh, interpersonal skill in the sense that team, working together in a team, working together in a team and uh, cooperating with one another as in cooperating with one another means basically uh, have that kind of a sync with one another as in working in a team uh, while working in a group etc being able to communicate effectively, being able to interact effectively, that everything includes, comes under teamwork. Now connects the last one under this, under the most valuable interpersonal skills is confidence or assertiveness. Being able to put forth your ideas in a very bold way, in a very assertive way, in a very confident way comes under confidence or assertiveness. Now next we, what we have is communication. As in the first uh, interpersonal skill that was interpersonal skill that was discussed is communication. Now, good communication skills include several abilities, out of which six have been listed. The first one is your ability to think clearly and logically. Now, being able to think clearly and logically is very essential while while communicating. Being able to think in a very coherent manner, being able to think in a very logical manner, being able to think in a way that is very accurate, that and that being able to speak accordingly includes uh, includes the, uh, it comes under these two, uh, the, this category comes under this category. Next is expressing thoughts and ideas in a coherent manner. You are the basically the participant of whosoever is be whosoever is communicating has to be able to communicate or has to be able to express his or her thoughts in a very 
in a very coherent manner, in a very logical manner, in a very in, in a in a in a manner which is very which includes a lot of clarity. And the third one is being able to speak precisely and appropriately. Not being able to die. That person should not be able to digress. Should not be able. Should not be distracted. He or she should be very focused. He should be very focused, and he should speak very accurately. And he should uh, he should uh, talk only according to the to topic that is being discussed. So he should respond or he should talk appropriately. Next is listening to others and responding accordingly. Now, when there are several participants in a in a basically a discussion, or while while the communication while the communication while the communication is in progress, or while the discussion is in progress, the participant's ability to dis listen to others effectively listen to others, being a very active listener, listening to in a way that that uh, listening in a way which is very uh, listening uh, listening in a way which is very uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is very effective. Has to be has which is very effective and has to be responded has to and he or she has to respond accordingly. Next is expressing agreements, disagreements, and reservations without hurting the listener's feeling. Now both there are basically there are two participants in a communication. One is the listener and the other is the speaker. Now when the uh, when the speaker is spe uh, when the speaker is speaking, he has to express he has to, he has to he has to express agreements agreements as in what he uh, he agrees to uh, and what he disagrees to whatsoever it is and he has to do so without l hurting the listener's sentiments and feelings this is very important primarily because when the speaker speaks there there can be different there can be different uh, reasons why uh, the the listener may not be the listener may not be attentive primarily because if the list uh, primarily because if the listener is the listener's feelings are hurt his or her sentiments are hurt now the last point under communication is Helping others see a problem or situation from the different perspectives. That is, there should be multiple perspectives. That is, everything. It should not be isolated. That kind of a dis the discussion or the problem or situation should not be seen from one particular point of view. Different perspectives should be brought. Uh, different. It should be viewed from different perspectives. Next, what we have is listening as a form of communication. Listening as a form of communication is very important. It's a very vital part of communication. Now, communication, as discussed earlier, involves the skill of listening. And to become a good communicator, one needs to develop this skill. In, uh, in other words, communication basically is a is a very important skill. And this importance, uh, this one of one of the, the important skills under communication is listening skills. And to develop this kind of a skill, one needs to become a very active listener. Now, a person's competence in listening contributes to the development of his or her speaking skills. Now, basically, listening and speaking both go hand in hand. So, since both of them are related to each other, a person's competence or a person's ability in speaking well, in listening effectively, also is related to his ability to speak well. Next, what we have next, what we have is an active listener. Now, an active listener, there are certain characteristics of an active listener. The first one is that he or she has to pay very keen attention to what is being said. Now, this there will be a, definitely there will be a speaker and there will be a listener. Now, when the listener, so when the act, when the active listener is listening to listening to what the speaker is trying to communicate, he or she has to pay very very keen very keen attention to what is being said, and then. He ha he or she has to make key uh, sorry ma uh, make eye contact with the speaker. That is, this is one another crucial parts of communicating effectively. That is, an active listener has to make proper eye contact with the speaker. Being uh, distracted, being being distracted, being distracted can be one major reason why he is not able to pro ma maintain proper eye contact with the speaker. Next is being able to communicate his or her response through expressions and gestures. Now, an active listener has to be good enough in communicating his or her response. He has to either nod his head or either send some sort of a cue or some sort of a communication to the to the speaker, trying to convey that he or she is actually a part of that discussion or conversation or whatsoever. So, therefore, he has to make he has to make his response through different gestures or non or non verbal cues. Next is responding through verbal signals or res uh, responding appropriately. Now, verbal signals, as in saying uh -huh, or okay or something of that sort, can help in responding effectively. And therefore, the, and, the, and therefore, this is one such way of 
uh, one such way of responding, uh, one such characteristic of responding uh, of an active listener. Next is retaining the information for later. This is another essential uh, characteristic or a trait of an active listener, listening very uh, attentively and then trying to recall and trying to retain that kind of an information for later is very essential. Next is he or she as in the active listener should not interrupt the speaker by any means. When the, Once the speaker is done speaking or once the speaker is done discussing whatsoever it, uh, the topic that is being discussed, then later probably the speaker can, uh, sorry, the, uh, the listener can interrupt or ask for the or ask questions or for clarifications that is only after the speaker is done speaking next are the five steps of listening the first one is receiving now the first step in the process of listening is receiving the speaker's message which involves isolating the message from all of the sounds and interpreting what is being said now this is the most essential or the first and foremost part of listening that is receiving receiving as in you have to receive or try to li listen to the speaker's message and then isolate or try to try to differentiate that kind of a, that message from the other sounds from the other sounds which can be distracting and interpret try and listen uh, try and interpret in whichever possible way of what is being said the second one is understanding now during this stage the listener attempts to understand the message's meaning now this is another important part uh, part of listening the second stage that is understanding this is uh, this is a stage where the listener has to make frequent attempts or has to make his may make his utmost attempt to understand the message the the message that is the, that is the meaning of the message that is what what the speaker is trying to convey through that message the next one is it is the next one is that incorrect meaning can be formed if not if he doesn't understand the proper meaning of the message that there are tendencies there are there may be tendencies there can be problems while interpreting the message there are chances that this message can be misinterpreted or an incorrect meaning of that message can be formed the third stage or uh, the third step or rather the stage of listening is evaluating now to if efficiently evaluate the message there should be no additional ambiguities. There is more than one interpretation or time spent sorting insignificant points. Now, the basically evaluating means there should be no, there shouldn't be ambiguities. Ambiguities as in something that has different meanings. So basically, one message can be interpreted in different ways. But what the speaker is trying to be, speaker is trying to convey should be effectively conveyed to the uh, listener and the listener has to make out the correct meaning of the message as in there should there should more than one interpretation or time spent sorting insignificant uh, uh, insignificant, insignificant points should be avoided at any cost then it is here that the listener should try to determine whether the information is valid now this is this is one stage that evaluation evaluating it's one stage where the listener should try or he should determine whether the information that is being passed on to him the information that he has uh, under that is he has understood is valid or is not next we have the fourth uh, stage or the fourth step in listening that is called responding now responding or the feedback stage is another very important or rather let's say it's it's another very essential part of listening uh, one the second last one under uh, the second the second last one under uh, the stages of listening it is when the listener indicates that the involvement in the conversation through verbal or non verbal communication so basically how much involved or how much he, he, the listener, the active listener is paying attention to what is being uh, said or what is being conveyed. So, basically his involvement in the conversation, how does he respond to that kind of a discussion or a conversation through non-verbal or through verbal communication. Now, non-verbal communication includes, like as mentioned earlier, nodding ahead or saying a hmm or probably uh, say such kind of non-verbal non non gestures are very effective. Uh, and these these are the normal uh, these these are this is what is included under nonverbal uh, communication and through verbal communication probably after the speaker tries to after the speaker com completes his uh, talk or uh, whatsoever the conversation probably the active listener or the listener can come up with a verbal response so here response or responding is the fourth or the second last point under a uh, second last step or stage under listening 
Now the last one, which is the most essential essential one, that is most that is what most of us tend to uh, fail out on, or more, most of us tend to let's say lose out on. Primarily because we are primarily the person who is pay, listening to, or the active listener who is listening to the conversation, or this or whatsoever the speaker is listening to, is not very attentive, or is not is not has not keenly attend, uh, is has not keenly has not keenly attended the. Uh, attended or listened to the con to the con to the conversation. Now, remembering all pieces of information is very crucial moving the fo moving forward in the conversation. Now, basically, removing the uh, basically uh, moving forward in a conversation includes your ability or the listener's ability to try and recollect basically all the important parts of the conversation, or let's say not just the important parts of the conversation. And basically, the, um, the essential parts, so the most crucial parts of a, conver of a conversation, basically, or a conversation, or a situation, or a discussion, or whatsoever it is. So basically, trying to uh, trying to recollect all that, remember all that, and not just uh, and not just remember all that, trying to re respond uh, respond accordingly. Okay, and. Um, if the listener is unable to remember what the speaker was saying, chances are high that they are not effectively listening. Now, this is another very important point that comes under remembering. Now, if the listener, the active listener is uh, unable to or his inability to try and recollect what the speaker has speaker has conveyed through his discussion or uh, uh, through his uh, through his conversation or what's or or the or the uh, point that points that he has discussed, there are very high chances or there are likely chances that the speaker, the, the listener hasn't actively listened or the listener was not keen enough in listening to the uh, conversation, to the points that has that had been discussed. Now, these were the major points that were discussed under listening, which were the five, the five of them and the communication and uh, the basic point, the basic points have been discussed. Thank you so much.